word from the Lord, and it is from Colossians 1, Colossians 1, 11 through 17. We're just going to open with the word, and then we'll go straight into uh, what we have today. I believe the Lord is into changing our perspectives. How many people are open for a, pers a perspective change, open for a paradigm shift? This is what the Lord is continually to do. Our God is wonderful, amen? That means God is full of wonders. We should always be scratching our heads like, look what God, can you believe? How did you? He's a God of wonders. All right, here we go. Colossians 1, 11 says, Being strengthened with all power according to his glorious might, that you may have great endurance and patience and giving joyful thanks to the Father who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of his holy people in the kingdom of light. For he has rescued us, how many glad to be rescued, from the dominion of darkness and brought into the kingdom of the Son he loves, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sin. The Son is the image of the invisible God. Check this out. The firstborn over all creation. For in him, somebody say in him, all things were created. Things in heaven and on earth. Visible and guess what? Invisible. I mean, no, you can't see everything. Whether thrones or powers or rulers or authority or America. I just threw that in there. All things have been created, what? Through him and for him. Here's my favorite verse of the whole thing. He is before all things and in him all things hold together. Woo, the word is good all by itself. Thank you for coming. God bless you. Thank you for being. Just a little, just kidding. We got a little bit more to go. The subject that we're going to talk about today is, is your thanksgiving... Is your thanksgiving, is it giving? Some of, the, some of the older people are like, I don't know what's happening. But if you are a part of the social media era, you would know the phrase, it's giving. Someone walks in with a beautiful orange uh, wardrobe, and you're like, oh my gosh, it's giving fall. It's giving pumpkin. It's giving pumpkin pie is giving that's kind of the vernacular of the day something is giving right so my question today is is your thanks giving y'all well, know it's the holiday season praise the lord thank god it's thanksgiving y'all know every year uh, i have a gripe against thanksgiving i'm gonna say it every year until a petition has been started um, before I say that, though, how many of y'all already got your Christmas tree and lights up? Raise your hands. Oh, what, one, one. Look at this is my kind of people. Uh-huh. Brother Andrew. Okay, okay. I, re I really expected more. Thank you. Okay. <sighs> because I have a gripe. I have a gripe. Poor little Thanksgiving. Just get, just get skipped over every year. We go straight from Halloween straight to the Christmas season. Just poor little thing. We ain't got no song. I say it every year. Ain't no Thanksgiving song. We just, <laughs> I said it last year. It's the one day that we're socially conditioned to be grateful. But if that one day gets the least shine, right, we just skip right over it. Um, the day is important because there's nothing worse than an ungrateful person. Do you agree with that? You ever held the door open for somebody at the store and they just walk in, don't say nothing? You're like, well, look at here. You're welcome. You know, we get all. There's nothing worse than an ungrateful person. Why? And you know, this is the reason why we have to teach our kids, right? Kids aren't just born grateful. You always have to tell them, say thank you. What do you say? Because they'll just take things and go. I'm just, I'm just out, right? Because my opinion, in my opinion, um, ungratefulness is linked to entitlement. Ooh. 
That's just my opinion. It's, a, it's, it's an entitlement. It comes from the expectation that someone owes you something and that they're supposed to do something for you and that you're supposed to get whatever you're supposed to get. You got it coming to you. That's what entitlement is. But, you know, how many have mamas or grandmas have told you nobody has to do anything for you in this life? Anybody ever told you that? You know, people break vows and contracts and promises every day. So when someone chooses to do something for you out of their free will, you got to hold on to that because that's very special, right? That's when you are to be grateful because they didn't have to do it. Even God chooses to love us. Y'all know that? The old folks used to say God didn't have to do it, but he did. He didn't have to do it, but I'm so, I'm so God, my, that, that's what they said. And, you know, thankfulness is, all, are, is also attached to humili- humility, right? It takes humility to be grateful and to be thankful because either you need to humble yourself to receive a gift, that you're not always the one who's giving. Some people, y'all can't hardly take a gift. Be like, oh, can I, can, I, can, I, can I pay for that? Or you have to have the humility <laughs> to take the help that someone's offering. It takes, you know, it takes some humility to be grateful. So, um, about Thanksgiving, uh, I heard this little boy once say to his mother, Thanksgiving should actually, mom, be after Christmas. And she's like, why, should, why would you say that? She's like, because then I'll have, I'll have more things to be grateful for. It should be after Christmas. After I get all my, my presents, then I'll be really grateful. But isn't that how we feel sometimes? In life, God, I would be a lot more grateful if all the prayers that I prayed were answered right now. That if, you know, the things that I'm dealing with right now, if if my money problems would just be, whoo, if I just had a certain amount in the bank, I would, Lord, you would really get my best praise. Like, for real. If you just give me them lotto numbers, Lord. (laughs) I will give you a right now praise, right? So the question is, what do you do when reality is staring you square in the eyes? And you can't muster up the strength, like Pastor Donna said last week, to be positive. Where you can't see the bright side. Because what I see is what I see and how I feel is how I feel. So how do I be grateful? Because as Pastor Mike said earlier, it's easier to complain, to talk about it, to be negative. Why? Because you're setting yourself to lower your expectations so you won't be disappointed. We've been disappointed a lot in life, let down, betrayed. So if I just keep my expectations real low down here, I won't lose as much. My heart won't be broken as much. Too many of us are focused on thanks having instead of thanksgiving even like the nine lepers even when we get what we want like the nine lepers sometimes we forget to come back and say thanks we think it's our own strength our own ingenuity our own mind our own concepts this is why we need to talk about thanksgiving today um if you were to look up the word thanksgiving in the dictionary you would actually see it listed as a noun as a person place or thing right because it's a holiday. But today I want to talk about Thanksgiving as a verb, as an action word. Um, It requires, gratitude is wonderful. It's great for us to write our gratitude list and the things to be grateful, count your blessings, name them one by one. We know that, right? But Thanksgiving requires action. Um, Our passage today is taken from the book of Colossians. Shout out to the Bible study crew. Where y'all at? I got some Bible study. Yeah, my Bible study crew in the house. Y'all, we just finished the book of Colossians. It only took us how many months? We, we were going since July, and we just finished last week the book of Colossians. It was amazing. But if you were in the church of Colossae, the time when Paul wrote this to the book, this particular passage, to these particular Christians, In their ancient context, they would not have been thinking about Thanksgiving in the way that we think about Thanksgiving, right? We, as Pastor Mike already said, we are uh, tend to think of it as this American holiday that is actually a farce. 
um, it is the ultimate thanks taking, right? In which there was not a peaceful feast, but instead an act of treason among the Wapanoic indigenous people who first made contact with the European settlers who brought nothing to this land but disease and committed numerous atrocities against them by stealing their land with bloodshed and colonialism. But I digress. The real storyline we know. But instead, these Jewish believers that Paul was writing to would have actually had a completely different notion of the word Thanksgiving. They would have heard it as a verb. They would have heard it because they would have instantly thought of the word sacrifice. They would have got this from the Hebrew scriptures of the Torah where God commanded five different sacrifices or offerings from his people. The first one was a burnt offering, a grain offering, a peace offering, a sin offering, and a guilt offering, right? So in the Leviticus 7, we see that there is a thing called a peace offering. Somebody say peace offering. And it was divided into three subsets. There was a Thanksgiving offering, there was a free will offering, and there was a wave offering. I'll say it again, a Thanksgiving offering, a free will offering, and a wave offering. Thanksgiving was something, uh, an offering you would bring in response to something that God had done. A person was especially thankful for something that God did in their lives, and they brought an offering for gratitude from deliverance from sickness or trouble or a blessing that had been received. That was one. The second one is a free will offering. And any, anyone that just wanted to freely express their love and worship to the Lord, they would bring a free will offering. The last one is a wave offering. It was an expression of thanksgiving upon the fulfillment of a voluntary vow. If you made a vow to the Lord and you fulfilled it, you would bring this offering, and the priest would then wave it before the Lord as an offering. Any of this sounding a little familiar? Thanksgiving then wasn't a list of gratitude, which is great, but it was a sacrifice. Somebody say sacrifice. We see this in the book of Psalms. We see it over and over again. The psalmist says, I will thank the Lord with the thank offering or let them sacrifice thank offerings and tell of his works or under vows, my God, I will present my thank offerings to you. It was a thing that they did unto the Lord. Now, the Hebrew word here, y'all just bear with me. I'm just setting this up. The Hebrew word for Thanksgiving is actually the word toda. Y'all remember from that, that we sung it, we sung it so much. We didn't know what we were saying, but we were we were singing that song. Toda, lift up your head. <laughs> yeah. As a church, church joke, sorry y'all. Um, the Hebrew word toda is translated Thanksgiving, which can also mean confession of a sin or in response to God's goodness and mercy. Y'all follow with me, follow with me. Here it is employed to express one's public, somebody say public, proclamation and declaration, confession of God's faithfulness and his works through a peace offering. The praise of Yahweh was always public. It was always public. When an individual came to praise Yahweh, they would praise him orally with a song. The Psalms 109 says, with my mouth. What do you say? With my mouth, I will greatly extol the Lord. With my mouth. And then it was also accompanied with instruments such as um, the, the praise was normally in the tabernacle or the temple. And it was under the direction of the Levites appointed by David. Strictly, this was their only job of the Levites was to celebrate the Lord through singing and song and worship. That was their only job. They was like, this is, their, this is, what, this is all y'all going to do, is make music unto the Lord. Come on. This is what thanksgiving means. It was something tangible. It was something that they could bring to the It wasn't a mental theory. It wasn't quiet. It wasn't something... That, you know, that they could just say, you know, I'm hiding it in my heart, right? This is what, now, now, I hear you saying, like, okay, thank you for the history lesson, but what does that mean for us? What does that mean for me sitting right here in these blue seats? So we are now under the new, the new covenant, 
That was the old covenant. We are now under a new covenant. And according to the passage that we read today, the rules have changed for us a bit. God is still requiring thanksgiving, but in a different way. Y'all following me? Our passage today gives us three reasons, just three, and I'm out your way, of why we should give thanks. Verse 12 says, and joyfully giving thanks to the Father. I love the word joyfully. Joyfully giving thanks to the Father, not half-heartedly, not coerced, not someone standing here making, I said clap your hands. We all been under arrest in the service before, haven't you? It's a stick up. You lift your hands. All right. I'm doing it because I'm scared, not necessarily because I'm worshiping the Lord right? Not coerced, but joyfully, joyfully. But where do we find this joy when life is looking you in the eyes, right? I got, I got something for you. It's all in this verse. Three reasons. The first reason, and I believe you'll see it on the screen, and I, I, each reason I can shout, but I'm going to keep it. I'm going to hold it together. The first reason is the Father qualified us, somebody say us, to share an inheritance of his holy people in the kingdom of light. This is so amazing because we have already been pre-approved. Somebody say pre-qualify. Aren't you happy when you get that little card in the mail and say you pre-approved? You're like, what up for what? What I'm getting? A car, a furniture, something. A house. When you are pre-approved, do you know that you are already pre-approved in the the spirit? That God has already qualified you. You've already been qualified. And guess what? You didn't have enough to pay it. You didn't have the credit for it. You didn't have the character for it. But God has already pre-qualified you to share. It's not a hoarding situation to share in the inheritance. Now, this is very important because in order to get an inheritance, what has to happen? Somebody got to die. And that's why we got to give all glory and praise to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Who died? He died for each one of us to be able to share in an inheritance. I always want to be in one of the movies where you get the mystery letter from an aunt you didn't know and you got an inheritance. This is better than that. We are partakers in an inheritance and not just any old kingdom, but a kingdom of light. That means we don't have to live in darkness anymore. We don't have to go sneaking and ducking and dodging no more. We can live a life that is full of light. You can be transparent, vulnerable. I live in a kingdom of light. Hallelujah. So when Jesus died, guess what? That means no more sacrifices. That's why we don't have an altar here and y'all not bringing in lambs and goats and turtles or whatever. We're not doing that no more. We now have a Savior who took our place. That was the acceptable sacrifice to God. I'm happy about it because it wouldn't be no more little animals just for me. Just because of, because of my sins, I would have took most of the animals up. Poor little Peter, they wouldn't have no, wouldn't stand a chance. I'm grateful for Jesus who took our place and was the acceptable sacrifice to God. And the second reason why we should give thanks is because we have been rescued. Our song said it earlier. We have been rescued. Somebody said, I've been rescued from the dominion of darkness. Come on, we used to be in the darkness and brought or transferred into the kingdom of the sun. Rescued. See, this don't work if you think that you already earned it. And I was actually good enough, so I just walked in. No, this don't work for you if you already think this. You need to realize the condition we were in before Jesus that we have been rescued, that Jesus went on a full-out rescue mission, a search and rescue team went out for your soul, that Jesus went to find you, that you was, I was the one little lamb just down all, around, all down the street and away, came after one of us, each one of us, he came for us to rescue. Come on, better than the Navy SEALs, better than the, they're better than the Marine, better than the Rangers. Jesus came to rescue us. We didn't just walk into the kingdom. We've been rescued from a kingdom of darkness. You ever tried to walk around in somebody's house you don't know in the dark? Get up to use the bathroom and you don't have no light. 
you going to hit, you going to, your toe hitting every wall. That's how we are in the, in the spirit. Just walking around, bumping our heads on everything because we're walking in darkness. Jesus came to be the light. How many are glad for the light? The last thing. Why should we have a praise? Why should we live with thankfulness? Why are we giving thanks? It's because we have redemption and the forgiveness of sin. I can run on that all by itself. Redemption means that we've been bought back. The act of regaining or gaining possession of something in exchange for a payment or clearing the debt. We owe the debt we could not pay. I don't know. Do, do we, there was no way to fulfill it. Jesus came and counseled. How many of y'all applied for the little student loan thing? You're waiting on your little, you're waiting on your little, they playing with my, I don't understand. Is it, did it go through or not? I, I did it. I think I did like three applications just in case. And people starting to get their little letters like, ooh, I can't wait till I get my little verification. But this is better than that. A debt you could not pay. We've been bought back, but not just any old thing. God, I love this song um, a long time. Y'all might not know. Let me not say that. Um, y'all don't know this song, For God So Loved the World, by uh, what's her name? Yes. Vanessa Bell. Oh, no. Vanessa Bell Armstrong? Yes, yes, man. Y'all, y'all don't know that. God So Loved the World. He said, God could have chosen to never love again and, you know, if, if riches could have paid the debt, God could have sold all the walls of Jasper and the streets paved with gold. God got it. If it was about money, I would have been no problem. But it was deeper than that. It was only one thing that could purchase our salvation, and it was the blood of Jesus. It was a real person that died for us, that really took our place. We've been bought back. Bought back from the, the bought, redeemed by the blood. And on top of that, that could have been enough. And then on you going to throw on top of that, I get my sins forgiven? That I can live each day with a clean slate? What is this? What is this gospel? What is this? It's almost too good to, wait, what? You not holding it against me, everything I did? In my teenage years, in my college years, in a time when my mind wasn't right, when I made bad decisions, you're not holding that against me? I have redemption and forgiveness of sin. What kind of grace, what kind of God do we serve? This is why I can live a life of thanksgiving. God paid a debt I could not owe. And for every day, I can't pay you back, but I will live for you. I will live a life of thanks living. Come on, every day is a day of thanks living because you died for me, because you paid. Come on, when he, somebody said, I just sit back and when I think of the goodness of Jesus, don't take much. Just when I think of it and all that he's done for me, what my soul <laughs> cries out. Come on, y'all got a hallelujah in it. Say hallelujah. Come on, I got better than that. So my soul cries out. Hallelujah. <laughs> Thank you, God, for saving me. How many glad to be saved? I'm happy about it. I've been rescued, bought back, redeemed, forgiven. This is why I can joyfully, I can joyfully give that. You don't have to, you don't have to push me to do nothing. You ain't got to tell me to wave my hands. You barely got to say, Saint Stan, I'm already standing. What are we doing? I'm joyfully giving thanks to the Father. Woo! So what is our response? If, if this is the context of thanksgiving, that it's giving, it's an action. When we come before God, it requires, it still requires something. We're not doing animals, but God's still looking for a sacrifice. This is our response from Hebrews 13, 5. I love this. It says, therefore, by him, let us continually, how, many, how often? Continually offer the sacrifice of praise to God. That is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. Every time I walk into the building, 
every time I'm coming, I'm not just coming for myself. Sacrifice means something has to die. Do we understand the concept of sacrifice? That when we walk in, when every time we come into the presence of God, that we are offering some, we are killing something. Every time we come into, so what are we bringing God as a sacrifice of worship? God, I will sacrifice. What are you sacrificing? God, I'm going to sacrifice my thought of the way things should be. God, I'm going to sacrifice what I thought it would look like. God, I'm going to sacrifice my pride. I'm going to sacrifice trying to look hard in the service. Like, I don't do all that, but you know, it's whatever. Praise the Lord. Y'all go ahead. I'm going to sacrifice my emotions. What are we bringing to God? What are, what are we killing? Jesus says, if any man comes after me, let him deny himself Take up his cross and follow me daily. Paul says, I die daily. What are we killing? What, what are we killing in our flesh every time we come into the house of the Lord or every time we watch online? What are you giving to God? Or is my relationship with God all about me? Think about this. It's giving narcissists. It's giving. It's giving. When, when our relationship with God is only about what God can do for me, what have you done for me lately, Janet Jackson Ministries? <laughs> God, what is, it's, this is like my list. Remember my list, God? And then, I mean, I'll... I'll I'll come to church or whatever, but I'm going to need you to do. When, when am I going to get my stuff? Like, I want it now. I want it, like, it's like Amazon Prime. Don't you work like that? Yes. If we're not careful, this is what our walk with God looks like. It's all about me. It's all about me. It's all about what I want. It's about my four and no more right? What are we giving? What are we giving to God? Remember just in the Old Testament, there was a Thanksgiving offering, right? There was a free will. God, I'm, you know, this is the beautiful thing about God. God doesn't want robots. God refuses to have people. That's what the whole Garden of Eden was about. Like, I'm going to give you a choice. I'm not going to force you to worship me. Here's a choice. I want you to choose me. I want you to be with me because you want to, not because I'm forcing you, not because you're scared of hell, not because you're scared of all. I want you to choose me and be with me because you, you're making the decision that, God, I want you. So that's what the free will is. Uh, God, I'm going to freely lift my hands because I'm making a choice to. It's a free will offering or a wave offering y'all think we'd be crazy we'd be like lift your hands we this is really in the bible we're not doing spiritual calisthenics this is not jazzercise we are not trying to get you in shape but the lifting of hands is symbolic it's a waving before the lord god here's my problems god i'm waving it before you god here's my worries Here's my anxieties. God, I'm waving and I'm lifting. Here's my children, oh God, I'm lifting them before you. Here's my finances, God, I'm waving them before you. I give them to you. Hallelujah. No one has to make you wave. It has to be voluntarily. It has to come from your heart. Lastly, what is your confession about God? What are you saying about God? How are you speaking about God? Well, it looks like God forgot about me again. Well, I guess God just looking over me. What are we saying? We are to speak well of God. I don't know what's happening, but I know God's going to come through every time. My God is a rock and a fortress. God is so faithful. I don't know what's going on, but I know God. The one thing I do know, God is faithful. I know God will always provide for me. That's, what are we saying? What are we, what is your confession? 
Now I know we still, we, we're at the end of the sermon and I, I know I can feel it. Some people, I feel it online. Maybe not in here, I feel it online. I hear somebody is like, okay, I hear you. But how do I give God thanks well, even when I don't feel like it? When things are crazy. And you know, I, I don't want to fake it. I don't want to feel disingenuous. So, you know, I, I feel what I feel. I don't really feel like it. Well, I got good news for you. It's at the end of the verse that we read. It's in Colossians 1. 15, I almost ran last time, but I'm not going to run this time. Starting at uh, verse 15, it says that the son, Jesus, he's the, Im in the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. All things were created by him, things in heaven and earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones, powers, rulers, authorities. All things have been created for him and by him. This is the part that I have good news for you. He is before all things, and in him all things hold together. Come on. In him all things hold together. I said it's in him. That's why all things hold together. So this is why I can give God thanks. Even when things look crazy. Because in him, he holds all things together. Your life, your finances, your decisions, even when things look broken and out of control, I got good news for you, it's in him. He's holding all things together. Do you believe that he's holding it all? If that's a reason to give God praise right there. God, you're holding it all together. I can trust you with it. Things are not out of control like I thought they were. You're holding it together, God. This is why I can give God praise. This is why we could give God. He holds it all together. I'm going to close with a quote. I don't know if you can show that, Brother Michael. But the quote says, I don't know if it's there. I'm going to wait on it. Wait on the Lord. He said, he said, oh, let, should I tell a joke? No, just kidding. If not, I'll just say it. I'll just say it. The quote is, if the only prayer you ever say is thank you, that will be enough. Because some of us come in like, I don't know what to say. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to, I, I feel weird lifting my hand. I don't know what to, I want to reassure you that if the only prayer you ever say from this time forward, if the only thing you can muster out of your heart, if the only thing that could come out of your lips is thank you, that'll be enough. That'll be enough. It's enough just to say thank you, God. The saints used to say if I had 10,000 tongues, it wouldn't be enough. It's just not enough to even pray. If I had 10,000 hands, it still wouldn't be enough. If all I can say is, if all I can utter is thank you, it's enough. So now we're going to stand to our feet because God is calling us into thanks living. And we're going to practice. There's no reflection questions this time. We're going we gonna to work this out before we leave. And we're going to just give God a praise. I want you to give God your best praise. Now, your best praise not, might, not, might not look like somebody else's. Somebody else might be running around and doing backflips. That's for them. But I want you to do the best praise you have. Even I'm shy, I'm quiet. Well, lift a finger. Do something. Your best praise, right? This is not for us. You know what? Praise is not for God necessarily. Y'all know that? God has myriads of angels right now in heaven worshiping the Lord our God. He doesn't necessarily need our little praise at 1305 University Avenue or online. Do you know praise is more for you? Do you know that you need to hear yourself say that God is good? Do you know that you need to hear yourself say that God is going to be faithful? That God always comes through? Some things you just can't think. Some things you need to say out loud. Before we go to the next verse, let's just stop right here. And I want you to just begin to worship God out of your own lips. Whatever you want to say to God, God, I thank you. God, I love you. God, my praise is not based on my circumstance. My praise is based on a person. 
like the psalmist David, you know, he was a man that was in his feeling, but he would always end his complaint with a but God and a yet God. I need somebody who will give God a yet praise. God, I don't know what's going on, but I will still give you praise. I need someone with a nevertheless praise. Do you have a nevertheless in your spirit? Hallelujah. How anybody got a, a hallelujah anyhow praise? God, I'll give you a praise. Come on, give God glory. Give God honor. If you don't have anything else to say, just say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for all you've done. God, it can always be worse. You always come through. You're always available. God, we give you glory. Come on, let's give God praise. Fill this room with praise. Come on, put your hands together. Give the Lord a praise. Come on, I need us to give God a whole fresh and praise. God, I thank you for life, health, and strength. God, we thank you for the activity of our limbs. God, we thank you that we are alive. God, we thank you for the for all that you're doing in our hearts, God. We thank you, Jesus. We could have been dead, sleeping in our grave. But God, you see fit to have us here right now at this appointed time. Come on, can somebody give an old deacon praise? God, we just want to thank you, oh God, that my bed was not my cooling board. That's what they used to say. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. I could be in a funeral home right now. I could be in a hospital right now. But God, we give you praise. Thank you for breath in our lungs, oh God. Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you for eyes to see it. Thank you for hands to clap. Thank you for feet to stomp. God, we give you glory. Hallelujah. You've been so good. You've been so good, God. You've been so good. You've been so good. Come on, let's give God a whole motherboard praise. God, you've been better than good. You've been better than good. Hallelujah. 